God, I love you with my whole heart above all things, because you are infinitely good. And for your sake, I love my neighbor as I love myself. Amen. I'm Tracy Sable. Tonight on EWTN News Nightly, a closer look at the history and importance of Our Lady of Fatima. Plus, the Vatican confirms Pope Francis will visit Canada this summer. Hear more about what is expected from the Holy Father's six-day trip. Join us for news from a Catholic perspective. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Friday one-hour presentation of Women of Grace. I'm Janet Williams. Today is the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima, and Catholics throughout the world are honoring the Blessed Mother under this title. On May 13, 1917, she began appearing to three shepherd children in the Cova de Iria in Fatima, Portugal, and continued to do so until October of that same year. Over the six apparitions, she entrusted to the children three secrets which had great import for the world at that time, and as we've come to see, for the world in the future as well. What was the substance of those secrets? What were Our Lady's requests? And what do they have to do with this present moment? Our guest will tell us. We are women of grace from the throne of the Lord Most High. Oh, and we lift up our praise from the depths of our souls here at home. Oh, 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 God, it is a Time, God has seen fit to send the Blessed Virgin Mary from heaven into time to communicate a message to the church militant. These heavenly messages never add to public revelation, which ended with the death of the last apostle. Rather, they highlight some aspect of public revelation that is of great importance for a given moment. Or they correct, instruct, or encourage the church militant as necessary for a given moment. Such is the case in the messages brought by the Blessed Virgin Mary to three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal in 1917. Here to tell us about these messages and the phenomena that accompanied them is our guest, David Carollo. Mr. Carollo is the executive director of the World Apostolate of Fatima, a public association of the lay faithful, whose mission is to spread the message of Our Lady of Fatima and to encourage the world to heed her requests. Let's welcome David. David, welcome to Women Thank of Grace. I'm so happy to have you here on this very important day. It is a very important day. Great anniversary. It's the it's the first of the six. Although you know the, the Fatima the Fatima message goes through the year, but yes, we celebrate, and that's why at the shrine today and all we celebrate this great event, uh, the first of the messages and, and and introductory the introductory part of the Fatima message. Yes, and of course today is the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima, yeah. uh, and we remember her again on October 13th. Exactly. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, this is the designated day, and it always makes me mm. so happy to be able to say that my eldest daughter was born on May 13th. Oh, I was born on July 16th, and my youngest well, daughter was born family. on August 15th. So you have so, all these great uh, <laughs> we feasts have in there, don't you? All up, and <laughs> we're great. very Marian family That's for all wonderful. kinds of reasons. Yeah. But you know, uh, we, we think about that moment in time in 1917, and maybe you can just set up for us, you know, the, the, the history of that era and what was going on uh, during that particular first apparition and following through. Yeah, I mean, the, the times were, if you look back at, you know, you go the late 19th century into the early 20th century, the, the, the turmoil. Now you're in the midst of World War I. Mm -hmm. and, and the world was, as, as Pope Benedict said, this was the suicide of Christian Europe. Remember that phrase he made? That's amazing. And, and it, it, was, it, was, it was, there was so much despair throughout. I mean, the Christian 
the Christian monarchies and the governments in general were just giving way to secularism. And this is before the communist re revolution that would right. come later in that year. And, uh, I, you know, he wanted to bring peace to the world, and he asked for a novena, a worldwide novena. And on the eighth day of that novena, she appeared at Fatima mm -hmm. on May 13th. And I think it was a statement that I'm here and I want to help you, but there are reasons why. There are things you're going to have to do if you want peace. You know, we always look at Our Lady is going to bring peace. We're going to have a consecration. We're going to have these different things. And she's going to put peace on the earth. <clears throat> God doesn't work that way. He gives us the footprint. Now, what does she say? If my requests are heeded. How many times was that said? Was that asked? And I think that's really what it's about. She laid out a blueprint for peace and a blueprint for salvation. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the Fatima message is our, the reiterations of the Gospels, that's all it is. And mm -hmm. there's nothing new in there, nothing yeah. that, that we don't, I mean, new insofar as there's warnings and there's that type of thing, but nothing new is, as far as doctrine and that is concerned. And, no, and there never will be, <coughs> as, I, will as be. I mentioned in the open, you know, right. um, pu public revelation ended with the death of the last apostle. Absolutely. And this is one of the criteria, a criterion that the church uses to evaluate uh, a supposed or reported apparition. Absolutely. And that is, is there anything in there that is outside of what we know in sacred scripture. If so, it's an immediate kibosh on that exactly, one, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, but it's very important to know that, that, you know, Jesus promised that he would never leave us, that he would right. send the paraclete. And so he sends the Holy Spirit to the church. Right. But also from the cross, he bequeaths his mother. So he gives his mother to the church. So she comes as prophet in many of these apparitions. And I think she's dramatically a prophet in Fatima. Yeah. And she tells us what it is that we need to do. But, you know, I'm intrigued by this idea of, of peace, you know, given this moment that we're living in right now, David, I mean, we're, we're living, this, this is a, what do I want to say? This, this is a, a very crucial moment. We're going to go one way or the other in right. this world. Right now, we're headed in one direction that's not a good one. But heaven is with us, right? right. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, this, this message, this, this idea of peace, what, what is God really about? Conversion of hearts. That's right? right. So it's it's he, if there's peace in the heart, there's peace in the world. Well, that's right. It's not like heaven's going to wave, as you said, a magic wand right. and just take everything away. It doesn't work that way because he's after hearts. He's after our eternal salvation. Well, and that's 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 exactly it. I mean, so so we can we can ask for the grace for anything, and God will grant grace, but it's free will. Mm -hmm. See, free will is the one thing that he respects more than anything. That's right. And that's why his permissive will allows bad things to happen, because it's a free will of people doing bad things. Let's be realistic. That's right. But, you know, God respects that to such a great degree. And that's why, as the, as the Fatima messages progressed throughout the, the six months, you had May, June was more of a reaffirmation. What was June? The vision of hell. Mm -hmm. It's real. <laughs> yes. Let's be realistic. I mean, it's not like, it's not here. I've spoken places, well, now don't scare the children. I don't want to scare anybody. But you have to point out actions have consequences. And the entire Fatima message is about that reality that actions have consequences. So, so if we have a war, as Our Lady said, war is a punishment for sin. Sure it mm -hmm. is. Every disruption is a punishment for sin. You know, when you look at, think about it, when, you know, the closer you are to God, there is what, peace and serenity, you know, there's love and serenity. The farther away you get, there's what, hatred and chaos. Mm -hmm. Well, where are we in this world today? You know, hatred and chaos. Hatred and chaos to such a great degree. Mm -hmm. And it's happened throughout history and it, and it fluctuates up and down. But do we actually ever learn a lesson? I don't know. I, it seems as though we seem to. And I do believe that the actions of people in like our organization and others worked very hard to try to bring about you know, to, to placate and to listen to what Our Lady asked, mm -hmm. even if it seems late. And that's why 105 years after the apparitions, it's still relevant. Oh, it's, it, I, in some ways, I think it's more relevant today than it was then, yeah. although there were so many prophetic utterances of Our Lady in that, and I want to unpack some of those with you uh, or have you unpack them for us. But the, the, the fact of the matter is that, um, you know, when you when you consider the, 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 the reality of what you just said, you know, the corporate weight of, of sin is what drags the world down. Right. I remember something John Paul II talked about, the communion, you know, like this communion of sin, this compilation right. of sin, right. and, and, and the devastating effects that that has. It's an oppressive force on the world. It, it is. But conversely, 
so is grace. That's right. So when you have people that are living Our Lady's message, when you have people that are heeding Heaven's requests, then that grace rises up. That's right. You know, and it lifts it, you know, it, it make all, all boats begin to, to rise, you know, everything right. begins to rise. So, yeah. uh, you know, we, we can't forget that. We're right. never left abandoned, but as you say, it's a matter of the will. What are we going to do about it? It is. It is free will. God just, I mean, Adam and Eve had free will. The angels, the, the rebel angels had free will. We mm -hmm. all do. And mm -hmm. that's how God does it. He wants us to want him. That's right. Okay. And if, if what we have is just laid out, it's like a spoiled child. If it's just there for you, you, well, okay, I have it. You don't appreciate it. But if you have to work for it, if you have to accept it, and if you have to follow certain things, it means more to you. That's right. And I think that's what Our Lady was saying, you know, you know, follow my request. If my requests are heeded, all mm -hmm. these wonderful things will happen. But if not, mm -hmm. what did she talk about? I said, Russia would spread her errors. Okay, mm -hmm. well, they didn't even know what Russia was. And keep in mind, <laughs> this was months before the Bolshevik Revolution. I know. So nobody knew really what that meant. And that's one of the prophetic utterances of Our Lady. Exactly. She's really prophesying something exactly. there, you know. Um, but yeah. those children were unschooled children. Very unschooled. Yeah. You know, they they thought Russia was a person. Yeah. They had no idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just it didn't click with them mm -hmm. because they're simple. That's okay. Right. And it's a simple heart. Um, uh, you know, when you when you think of, uh, of you know, the, the holiest people in history, they're not necessarily considered to be the most, you know, intelligent and, and, and by worldly standards and that they're probably more intelligent than we are in many ways, you know, because they, they, they think with their heart. Mm -hmm. and, and God said, come to me as a little child, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's why, you know, I mean, you, you know, I mean, could Our Lady have brought the messages to, you know, a Jesuit scholar, to the Holy Father, to a president or a prime minister of a country? Sure. But, you know, they had to come through the humility of, of uh, our humility to accept what these simple people were saying. Yeah, and you know, it's an interesting thing because um, most of the time our Blessed Mother appears to children, right? Right. And there is a passage in scripture that says a child will lead them. Yes, you know? absolutely. And, we, and we, we understand that on one level, but yeah. this is an application too, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. It's from the voices of these little ones who yeah. couldn't possibly have the intellectual acumen to be right. able to, you know, know these things yeah. that speak these truths like Bernadette mm -hmm. at Lord, you know. Right. She yeah. said she was the Immaculate Conception Conception, you know. Yeah, it's okay, like, okay, whatever that, that means, right? Yeah, if, no, if he's <laughs> so, children, you're right. Yeah, they, so it's a beautiful thing. Let's talk about that first apparition, the May 13th apparition. Mm -hmm. This is the first time she comes, but she's prepared the children That's right. through an angel. Well, see, this is the thing. This wasn't the first apparition in May 13th. It was a year before when the angel of peace appeared three times to the children and taught them <clears throat> these prayers of adoration, you know, the pardon prayer. I love that. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love thee, and I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love thee. Well, what is that saying? That's our mission statement. Mm -hmm. We have to work for the salvation of souls by praying, by first learning and living, and then praying for others to follow mm -hmm. what has to be, you know, I mean, if you don't, you know, we have to make reparation for people who don't adore God. Yes. And don't listen to him. Yes. You know, uh, years, years ago, <clears throat> the Lord taught me a great lesson about that. Um, it was a particularly difficult situation that I was in the midst of. And the Lord was asking me to be the one to make the changes yeah. in this situation. And I, I, I was, I was having a little discussion with the Lord about well, of course. that. You know, what are you doing to me? Yeah, <laughs> why me? You know, why not the person over here who doesn't get the whole story? Why, right. why, why me? You know, I yeah. love you. I, I, I go to mass. I go to prayer meeting. Right. I read my Bible every day. I have a prayer time. Blah 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 yeah, blah blah yeah. blah. You know, and and the Lord said it's always up to the believers. That's right. Because the non-believers are not going to enter into the fray. Yes. Right. So mm -hmm. when you talk about making reparation, you know, it's the job of the church military and that would be all of us who profess our faith, yeah. right? And, and that are working towards our salvation. We have right. to understand, you know, none of us have made it past the finish line, okay? Yes. And how do we do it? We do it by living the charity of working for helping others. Like you mm -hmm. mentioned in your situation, you know, um, I must had a priest say to me, you know, well, it's your job to be the better person. Yeah. In a certain situation. Yeah. And we want to do this. Yeah, exactly. Why? Me, why should I? Yeah, but <laughs> absolutely. And we're all that way mm -hmm. because we know we're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, and we are often right in a position, <laughs> but, you know, showing that, that kindness and that charity towards somebody, 
might change them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and that's what happened in this situation. Yeah, so, true. you know, it works every time. Yeah. We just have to remember to do it all the time. Exactly. Right? That's exactly. the hard that's, part. That's hard. Yeah, it is. So she prepares them with this angel. This angel yeah. teaches them prayers of adoration, teaches them how to adore. Yeah. This prayer, uh, this angel also offers the Eucharist. Yes, and the third apparition brought the Eucharist to the children, um, it, which, which shows you the foundation of the Fatima messages. It's Eucharistic reparation. Mm -hmm. Reparation, reparation, Eucharistic reparation is what, is what the former Bishop of Fatima said. That's mm -hmm. what it is. And many have repeated that, but that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It's Eucharistic reparation because, let's be realistic, you know, we only are reconciled to God through penance and the holy sacrifice of the Mass and the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. Well, without that, there is no salvation. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me, we're going to go to a break, mm -hmm. but I want to hold up one of the books that we have that's yes. offered uh, by, by, um, by the uh, apostolate. And friends, look at this. We're talking about adoration. We're talking about Eucharist. We're talking about making reparation. And here is a way to do it. It's called Night of Love, an hour by hour companion for the Fatima night vigil, right? Imagine making a vigil all through the night in reparation for the sins of the world. Here is a guide to help you to do that. And it's available for you at EWTN's Religious Catalog. Uh, an excellent book for you to have. Uh, John uh, Haffert is the one who penned this book. And it's beautiful. So we offer you this book. In addition to that, this is, this is a must read. It As is. a matter of fact, I have a, a trip coming up, and I think this is coming on the plane with there me. There you go. Uh, <laughs> this is A Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary. Oh, don't you love that? I love the title, A Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary. And what is this now? This is the biography of Sister Lucia, third seer, and the oldest, the third uh, well, she's the oldest of the she three. She was the oldest and the right. longest but surviving But the longest one. living is, yeah. yes, right. And yeah. of course, Jacinta and Francisco have been canonized. Yeah. Uh, but this is the life of Sister Lucia, as reported by the other sisters who exactly. lived with her, by those in her own community. So this is going to be a fascinating read, and I can't wait to dip into it. I haven't had the chance yet. Must. So we want to send you out to EWTN's Religious Catalog. It's EWTNRC.com, the home of holy reminders in memory of our Mother Angelica. Get a copy of each of these books, I'm telling you, this is a great, great uh, couple of books, a great dynamic duo. We're going to be right back with our guest today. Stay with us. Hello friends, I am happy to invite you to become a member of Women of Grace Exclusive. That's right, an exclusive membership. By becoming a Women of Grace Exclusive member, you will have anytime, anywhere access to a vast library of resources, including our television programs, radio shows and podcasts, our archived webinars by outstanding presenters, church documents and articles, and so much more. It's affordable, educational, and inspirational. With one click, more than 25 years of resources are yours on an exclusive basis. It's a membership program for such a time as this. Visit our website at www.womenofgrace.com for more information. Again, that's www.womenofgrace.com. The Lord is calling you to new heights. Draw closer to God as Father Richard Holung leads you on a spiritual climb. This world is not for itself, for Christians. The kingdom of God is to be reflected by you. You must fill the world with holiness. On the Mountain of the Lord, a new series, Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, here on EWTN.
Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about an exciting Women of Grace event taking place at Our Lady of Divine Providence House of Prayer in Clearwater, Florida. We'll be hosting a Benedicta Enrichment Seminar beginning Friday, May 20th and ending Saturday, May 21st. The theme is, get this, Two Days with Mary, a journey into our mother's heart. And I'll be the presenter along with Father Edmund Sylvia. Kitty Cleveland will be regaling us with uh, music. Together, we will contemplate the mystery of Our Lady through the writings of great saints, through sacred art, through quiet times of prayer, and through holy conversation and discussion. All of the information is available for you at Women of Grace website. Just go to womenofgrace.com. Space is limited, so I am encouraging you to register right away to secure your place. It's coming up in the very near future, so you don't want to miss that opportunity. And David, you know, I'm so excited to be able to have this opportunity uh, because we really want to go into Our Lady's Immaculate Heart. Yeah. And this is one of the great gifts that Our Blessed Mother gives to us, right? Yeah. And um, we're talking about Our Lady of Fatima today, friends, and I do want to remind you, uh, today is the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima. Of these two great books that are available for you at EWTN's Religious Catalog, uh, they are Night of Love, a home, uh, an hour-by-hour -hour companion for the Family Night Vigil, written by John Haffert. It's available for you there. And this one, this is a biography of Sister Lucia, the seer from Fatima. She was the eldest of the three, the longest living of the three, Jacinta and Francisco going home young in, in their years, uh, but sister remained alive until she, what was she, 95 or something 90, like that? Yeah, 98, I believe. 98 yeah. Yeah, years yeah, old, yeah, right? Yes, her yes. mission was not completed as quickly as the uh, as her two cousins. Right. Uh, but this book is a pathway under the gaze of Mary, and <coughs> it recounts the life of uh, Sister Lucia as seen through the eyes of the, the other religious sisters who lived with her in her cloister, uh, the Carmel of Coimbra, of course, uh, is the one who provides this for us. So we're excited for you to have an opportunity to order these at EWTNRC.com. David, you know, these are amazing books. I want to spend just a moment talking sure. about them before we get back to what Our Lady said at Fatima. And, and, and I think it helps for us to enter more deeply into the Fatima message. Uh, very much so. They do because, because one, uh, you know, the Eucharist is the foundation of the Fatima messages, as, as I've said. Um, this is what it's all about. Our Lady brings us to her son. Always. It's not for her, okay? You yes. know, she's a messenger. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a messenger that really has earned everything she needs for eternity, okay? <laughs> but she, is, she, she has a maternal love. You know, when people say Our Lady looks sad, well, I say, well, I don't think that's really possible for her to actually be sad, okay? I mean, she, she adores at the highest point of heaven, but she's, she has a, a, a profound sadness for us because she understands the horror of sin and separation from God because she understands to the greater degree how being close to God is, what it's all about, and what we need to strive for. So that's why, you know, I, I mean, she has this love for us and wants us to share on what she has. You know, that's what, that was the mission she was given from the cross. Yeah. Even before that, I mean, throughout her life, she accepted everything throughout. She suffered with our Lord. You know, people really look profoundly how she suffered with him throughout his life and his passion and stayed afterwards. You know, she, she could have probably gone home the next day after he died if, if she really, you know, if that's what she truly wanted. But she wanted to stay. And, and she's the one who helped the apostles and the other disciples come to understand what his mission truly was. Yeah. You know, that's never played up no. because those are, you know, that, that, that's not necessarily scriptural, but it's known that she was, she was there. She was there for St. Peter when he was so in such despair, you know, after mm -hmm. betraying him. I mean, this is the kind of thing that's the mother. That's you know, right. Yeah. Well, you know, this is a consistent theme with our Blessed Mother, uh, and, and this is her mission. Right. I mean, you know, God created her in His image and likeness to a quintessential degree, preserved her from the stain of original sin. Right. And why is that? Because she is going to contain the God-man within her of womb, course. right? Right. Uh, and yeah. so she would have been obliterated uh, had she had any stain of sin on her, or any crack or crevice, right. she would never have been able to contain the totality no. of God. No, so when when you think about that for a moment, but well, but why? What was that entrustment? It wasn't just to give him birth. And and this upsets right. me when I hear so many people that are so misinformed and have misconceptions. It was to give him. It was it was to do what a mother does: encourage right. her children in yeah. the way in which they should go. And Mary encourages Jesus all through his mission, and we can just walk through his life and see. She's there at every key moment. She's always telling him, no, not now, now. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking of the, uh, right. Jesus is lost in the temple and then the, the marriage feast, uh, you know, at Cana, right. right? She, no, your mission doesn't begin now. 
Yes, your mission begins now, right? Right, exactly. And, and she did that with the apostles, as you're mentioning. Yeah. That's why she's in the upper room with them, you know, in the cenacle. Exactly. And she does that for us. Yeah, I know. That's the beautiful thing. Yeah. And these apparitions, I think, at Fatima, confirm that fact that she's coming to give us the guidance that a mother wants her children to have, yeah. that they can reap the greatest reward, yeah. that there is salvation and all of the graces that come with that prior to our death. Exactly. That's exactly it. And I think that's really what it's she's guiding us through the times. And in these times, when it's more difficult, mm -hmm. you know, when we really need to uh, to be there, we, we, we really have to hip, be more diligent in what we're doing because because what's around us is so difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. think about it. I mean, I, I mean, we think about what what you know, children are up against today. My God, look what's going on in our schools, what's going on in society, and you know we need to stay focused on this. And that's why devotion to her is the only way. You'll, you'll weather this storm as a family, particularly, yes. and as individuals. Yeah. Well, and I like to think, you know, and I like to draw these connections and these parallels. I mean, Mary follows Jesus on that Via Dolorosa. Yeah. Why? Why is she there? Well, obviously she's there because she's his mother. Right. But she's there for more than that. Yeah. And she's offering her son strength. Yeah. She's encouraging him to go to the distance. Yeah. She's there standing firm at the foot of the cross, standing. That, that right, right. inspires me just to think about. She's standing there watching her son be tortured to death for three long hours. Right. And, she's, she, and he can look at her and he can find focus. That's right. you know? uh, and so you know, this, this, this great reality in our day and time, she is the woman for us yeah. because we can lose focus in this world we might not achieve our mission unless we can look at her. Well, that's right. I mean, you know, think about it. There are three people created, yeah, other than Christ himself, without original sin, mm -hmm. right? Okay. She's the only one who kept it through life. I mean, other than our Lord, of course, who was, you know, divine and, and, and human. So Adam and Eve had that gift. They lost it. She kept it. Right. I don't think that was easy no. throughout life. I mean, especially how you're a mother. I mean, how you see what's being done to your own child, okay, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, even before the passion, you see how he's being disrespected. You see how things. How could you not harbor some animosity if you're a normal person? Let's be right. realistic. But she understood it, and you know, in 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 the bigger picture of what this was about, why it had to be. Yeah. So, yeah. so in that first, you know, moment when Our Lady comes, the, the children have been prepared by the angel for this moment to happen, yeah. and she comes. And what does she? What does she do? What does she say? You know. Well, what does she start everything with? Be not afraid. Mm -hmm. Be not afraid. Just like the angel said to her at the Annunciation, you know, just like, just like the angel said to them a year earlier, you know, be not afraid. God has designs of mercy on you. Mm -hmm. Think about it. designs of mercy on you. That moves on to the next that we talked about, St. Faustina and, and divine mercy and all those kind of things. Mercy is what is behind the Fatima message. Mercy for us. Look, folks, I'm showing you, we have a problem here. We have to behave. We have to come back to living properly. And wow, you know, how do you, how do you uh, ignore that? Okay, yes. you know, I mean, you have to come back, live in accord with the Gospels. And they're pretty simple. There are those tablets that Moses brought down from the mountain and there was nothing changed. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> from the Old to the New Testament, they're right here. You know? We may have in the New Testament and in, 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 you know, in, in, our, in Christianity, we've redefined things, but you never redefine those things. No. Those are the laws of God. That's right. And that's it. You know? and, and, we have to, and we have to live by them. And if you love God, you want to live by them. See, that's what she's trying to point out. This isn't to be something based in fear, because people would talk about, like, again, the vision of hell and say, well, it's a, it, she scared them. Well, that wasn't to scare them. That was to show, to give them a somber reality of what happens when you define. But people, you know, they say, you know, you, 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 you pray for, you know, I guess fear can get you to heaven but love gets you there quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, you get past the fear. You know, you don't fear God if you truly love him. Yes. What yeah. you fear is hurting him. Hurting him, exactly. You know? yeah. And she wants to bring us to that point in yeah. time. And the, and the way in which she lays this out to the children is to pray that rosary. Right. Let's talk about the importance of the rosary. Well, the that. rosary is just about everything, okay? <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, we can do five shows on a rosary. Yeah, yeah. But, it's but, the greatest prayer next to the holy sacrifice of the mass. Well, it is. And, and think about it. What are you doing? You're, you are, you're, you're remembering the history of salvation, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, from, you know, what, from the Annunciation to the, um, uh, 
you know, annunciation to the to her coronation. Mm -hmm. That's it. It all went through like that. And I, I was very thrilled when the numinous, luminous mysteries came to be some years back. You know, Me a lot too. Of, a lot of people had trouble with that. Well, how could he add to the rosary? Think of what it is. This is the ministry of Christ. Yes. This is beautiful. You know. Yes. The joyful mysteries are beautiful. You know. But one thing that I always say that that the only time you really see the glory, uh, the glories and, and and the painless part is when you get to the glorious mysteries, because everything else has a struggle. Mm -hmm. The Annunciation, wow, now what do I have to do? You know, the visitation, look at that journey, the nativity, not finding a place to bring the Savior in, you know, um, the prophecy of Holy Simeon, you know, in the, in, in the presentation, you know, the sword will pierce you, you know, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple, the five sorrowful mysteries being what they are, you know. And, and, and I guess, you know, it's not that we have to get through, we have to have a Good Friday before we get to Easter Sunday. Yes. And that's, I think, what we have to always remember. Um, I love the way you refer, and in reality, we are the church militant. That's right. We're the church struggling here on earth. We're struggling that's for right. our salvation. That's right. You know, and I think where we, where we do part company with our, our Protestant brethren and other people of other faith is that you accept and it's over. No, 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 yes. it starts. Yeah, and if it's not starting, something's the matter. Well, that's right. <laughs> you know? And the rosary is the prayer. It, it's right. such a beautiful prayer because you, re, you know, it, it's rote prayer, certainly, and that's brought to criticism. But can you read the Bible while you're driving a car? Not really. Right. At least not safely. <laughs> right, right, right. You ought not to do that. You, you can do listen that. to it, maybe. But, yeah, maybe it's audio book or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> We've got to go to another break, David. Yeah. And friends, we want you to stay with us. I want to offer you these two books. I've mentioned them already. I'm going to keep mentioning them because I really want you to have them. This one is the biography of Sister Lucia. It's called A Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary. I absolutely love the title of this book. It's available for you at EWTN's religious catalog, EWTNRC.com, the home of Holy Reminders. In addition to this. Uh, we've got this book, Night of Love, an hour-by-hour -hour companion for the Fatima Night Vigil. And I really want to encourage you to get your hands on this book because this is, a, you know, a, a one that takes you through an entire night of prayer, right? And that's a beautiful thing. Maybe you have to work your way up to an entire night of prayer. And so you can break this into bits and pieces and use it as you sit before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And just ask, you know, the, uh, Our Lady's spouse, the Holy Spirit, to guide you and lead you uh, to what section of it would be most applicable at any point in time. It's a lovely book. It's going to help you. It's going to aid you. Both of these books at EWTNRC.com. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Hello, family. We know that the Holy Rosary is one of the most powerful prayers of the Church. And during May, Mary's month, we can pray the Rosary even more, asking for the intercession of the Blessed Mother to her beloved Son. This month, let's join as a family in prayer for the protection of all human life. So many are invested in the culture of death. But Pope St. John Paul II once said of fellow Christians, we are the people of life. And at EWTN, we are firmly committed to proclaiming and defending a culture of life. Today, we have a special gift for you, a pro-life rosary ebook. This online resource will guide you through the Holy Rosary with meditations that shine a light on the inherent value of every human life. Also, we hope that you'll make a donation today so that we can continue broadcasting the Holy Rosary and proclaiming the pro-life message to the nations. Thank you for your prayers and support. And may Jesus guide us all as we live out the mission of being the people of life. To make a donation and to sign up for the free Pro-Life Rosary eBook, please visit EWTN.com slash Pro-Life Rosary. You may also make a donation by calling us at 1-800-447-EWTN or by sending your gift to EWTN, 5817 Old Leeds Road, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. This week on Life on the Rock, we have Annie Powell. I'll give a reflection on the beauty of creation and much more. An all new rock solid episode of Life on the Rock, Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern on EWTN. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. Many of you have been asking us how it is that you can help the people in Ukraine. I want to give you an address where you can make a donation and you can feel very good about it, comfortable about it, and know that it is all going to the people of Ukraine and it's through the Knights of Columbus. You can make the donation simply by going to their website, KFC, all one word, kfc.org forward slash Ukraine, kfc.org forward Ukraine. We can certainly help them out at this moment. Yeah. What a great yeah. act of charity that is. And here is another illustration of why this message Four. of Fatima, <laughs> right, yeah. is so very, very important for us at it this is. time, David. Yeah, and, true. you know, you have, uh, we were talking about Night of Love, and we were talking about the need to make reparation yeah. for the sins of the world, for the affronts against Our Lady, for mm -hmm. uh, all of the ways in which we're living outside of the will of the Father right now. Right. And Night of Love uh, gives us, friends, an opportunity to be able to make an entire night's worth of prayer it gives yeah. us an hour by hour plan to follow. But I mentioned that if you can, uh, you can also use this just for a holy hour, for one hour, if you would like. In addition to that, we've got another good book for you, and these are both available at EWTN's Religious Catalog. This is a biography of Sister Lucia called A Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary. I love the title, and I can't wait to dip into this book. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to be Please. reading it very, very soon. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, oh, I'm sure I will, David. So, yeah. but you've got yet something else that you want to offer us well, too, right? The most important part of the Fatima message, not most important, the part that has not totally been fulfilled is the first Saturday's devotion. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remember, after the, the six apparitions, the Sister Lucia, if you recall, as we said earlier, they asked her lady, are we going to go to heaven? Yes. And she said, Jacinta and Francisco will come soon, but Lucia, you must stay a while longer to make mm -hmm. me known in love. That was 88 years. So that does make you think of eternity a little bit, if that's just a while. That's yes, <laughs> right, exactly, a while. <laughs> yeah, but in 1925, Our Lady appeared to her when she was a postulant with the Dorothean sisters. Mm -hmm. She was a Dorothean for some years. And that's where the bishop sent her because he wanted to help her a little, be a little more anonymous, you know. And so she went there and she received the first Saturdays devotion, okay? From Our Lady. From Our Lady. That that Our Lady wanted devotion, he wanted reparation made to her Immaculate Heart for the blasphemies against her Immaculate Heart, her, mm -hmm. you know, against her Immaculate Conception, against her divine maternity, perpetual virginity, the blasphemy of teaching children, you know, to be contempt for her. Mm -hmm. And finally, the the blasphemy of uh, against her images, her sacred images, and and as we were talking earlier about how it's so tied in with the Eucharist, I remember seeing a um, uh, an account of a black mass, and what did it start with? The desecration of a consecrated host, and then the desecration of a statue of Our Lady. Mm. That was the foundation of their whole thing. So yeah. What does that tell you? So we we are promoting more strongly now, <clears throat> as we always have, but the first Saturday's devotion. I believe that. We as an apostolate believe here in our 75th year in, in, in existence that, you know, this is the unfulfilled part that if people, if enough people fulfill the first Saturday's devotion, we will see the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. Oh, and I can't wait for that. But, you know, I think that you're talking about something very important. And we actually uh, had a question that came up about two things that, that you've already uh, talked about here. And one of them has to do with reparation right. uh, for the attacks or the blasphemies against Our Lady's uh, Immaculate Heart. And right. I, I want to go into that a little bit more deeply because people are thinking, well, you know, is that kind of you know, a lot of arrogance on Our Lady's part that she wants people, but everything that you've just mentioned is a reference to her son. Well, he said, God wants that. Our Lady mm -hmm. said, I want this to Sister Lucia. I want this in reparation for these offenses against my mother. Mm -hmm. Breaks his heart as a yes. man, as a human being, and of course, as, as a divine person, you know, because, because, you know, it's her yes that opened up the door to salvation. Yes. I mean, what if she had said no? I mean, I yes. don't know. That's almost unfathomable to us, but think about that. You know. Yeah, and she was freer than any other human creature to oh, say absolutely. yes or no. She had every. Yeah, she she could have accepted or rejected mm -hmm. it right there. It's true. Yeah. So now, how does this uh, this uh, passport? Well, we're calling this the Great Promise Passport because the okay. Great Promises that exi that are there given by Our Lady for those who fulfill five First Saturdays. Now, now, I want. I don't want to. Let it go, because five is not enough. Okay? Yes, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> but, right. But for, to fulfill it against those five blasphemies against Our Lady. So we have, a, we have an initiative going on. If you go to bluearmy.com, you'll see it, and you can get the Great Promise Passport. And so for the five months, you, you follow the instructions on there, and then what you do is you, you fulfill what's required, communion, 
confession, you know, pray in the rosary. What does Our Lady ask? You pray five decades of the rosary. And then the most important part of it is, and then keep me company for 15 minutes while mm-hmm. meditating on the rosary. You know, keep me company, not just pray them. Right. Not just, you know, I mean, I've done it when I'm driving and that because sometimes you have no choice, but, but meditate and That's think right. about, you know, really get into the heart of Mary because, because the Fatima spirituality is it brings you into the heart of Mary, the Immaculate Heart. She first appeared with the Immaculate Heart in the second apparition in June, That's right. and it went on. You know, what was that? That was something strange. They didn't understand it, but then, then it was all fulfilled here. So we ask you for five months. You follow what 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 it called. Then you you take a you take a picture of yourself, a selfie, and you send it in, and you receive this. You get your passport. This is this is what you do when you do the Camino in Santiago de Compostela. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. do the five months. Every month we'll give you a new one here, and then you will have fulfilled the five first Saturdays. Now, at that point, I will say again. Don't stop at five, because if no. you've done it for yourself, now what about for your spouse? What about for your children? What about for a friend? And here's the best part, you know, what about for somebody you don't like? Yeah. Okay, because yeah. the Fatima message says, you need to pray for the salvation of souls, mm-hmm. not just the people you want, yes. that you love, okay? Yes. There are a lot of people you don't love, or at least you don't love in, 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 you know, I mean, love, you have to love them for who they are, but a lot of people we don't like too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, you know, and that, that uh, that's reminding me of, of of another Carmelite, Saint Therese of Lisieux. Right. You know, she, there was a religious sister that irritated her. Oh, always. Yes. <laughs> you know, and so what did she say? She says, "I knew the devil was mixed up in all of that." <laughs> <laughs> that she was so irritated, so she began to pray and do little acts of charity for this yeah. sister, yeah. and that. To the point where the sister went, Therese, what is it that you find so charming about me? <laughs> and then that's Therese true. said, I knew, you know, yeah. we had won the battle. We all say you kill them with kindness. Okay, that's what she's doing. And that's what we're supposed to do. You know, yeah. think about it. You know, faith, hope, and charity, the, you know, the, the, the theological virtues, you know, faith and hope will not exist in the next life. That's right. I mean, you'll, 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 you don't need faith. You'll see it there. Hope, you'll either gain or have lost everything well, at that point. It'll be fulfilled. But charity. Yes. Charity starts here and it extends into eternity. That's right. And the charity you show people, they turn on the news, you get angry at somebody, I can't stand that person, pray for them. Yeah, I know. Okay, pray yeah. for them. Yeah, and it's hard. It is you know, very hard. It, yeah, yeah, but you know what, that, that's, 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 really, where the, that's yeah. really where the grace is. I wanted to say that's where the magic is. Yeah, are but, you a you disciple know. of Mary? Yeah, And exactly. if you are, you're going to do it. Yeah. yeah, and you know, one other thing I, w- I just want to mention when you talk about, you know, our Blessed Lady shows her heart, and, 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 and you kept saying, you know, we, we want to get into Our Lady's heart. Right. You know, people were saying, mm, well, David, what do you mean by that? Yeah. But, you know, St. Louis de Montfort tells us exactly. that, you know, Our Lady's heart is a place and then Father, Father Frederick Faber says, no, Our Lady's heart is a world. It's a world. It's, it's a world. Really it contains all of the mysteries of her son's life and it contains the fullness of grace and it's right. where the Trinitarian life dwells. So exactly. she wants to welcome us into that place. So those 15 minutes of meditation, yeah. you know, Mother, just take me by the hand and walk me yeah. into your immaculate heart. Let me just sit here now yeah. and you show me what you want to show me. Yeah. You teach me what exactly. you want to teach me. Exactly. You might not yeah. get anything in that moment of prayer, but you're going to find that things begin to happen. And you know, I, and a lot of people say, well, that doesn't seem like a masculine thing. It's the most masculine thing you can do oh, is yes. to respect your mother. Okay? That's exactly right. <laughs> Let's be realistic. That's okay? exactly you know, right. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, in our world today, when we, we just have such twisted ideas of what is, what is right and what is decorum and all that. No, no, no. It's, this is, you know, this is where we have to be because we're children of Mary and you bring St. Louis to Montford in and his, his classic on true devotion oh it my tells gosh, you everything, yes. okay? Uh, you know, we all, I mean, everybody that's in a level in this postulate, I've always promoted, you must at least consider be part of that. And we've worked yeah. with the Montford Fathers on a series for that too. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, you know. It is indeed. Because, you know, it, it is, it is, it is St. Louis de Montfort understood, and that was years before. And he understood these times. That's right. You see what I mean? You know, it's easy to say that, well, he was talking, you know, how many years ago? No. He looked at today. Yeah. And saw what we had. That's true. We well, we're, we're going to go to a break in a few minutes, a couple okay. minutes. But I do have a question that came in via mm-hmm. the email in preparation for the program. And this is from Denise in Florida. And she wants to know what were the messages Our Lady told Jacinta at the end of her life? And that's pretty interesting. A lot about Jacinta. She died lonely in a hospital in Lisbon. You know that story, okay? Because mm-hmm. she was, she suffered from the Spanish flu. That's right. That was 19, uh, you know, that, that was the, which came out right after, which is interesting. Then a hundred years later, at the, at, we have the centennial, we have a pandemic, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's almost like there's a lot of symmetry to this, you know? But um, 
there are many things attributed to that. You know, she did say, make the comment to her about fashions would be offensive mm -hmm. to God. And look mm -hmm. today, I mean, how we are. Mm -hmm. And it's not just women, it's, it's women and men. Every, oh, we are, we, are we, we don't have decorum. I mean, we just, and it's just been steadily going down. Um, she also appeared to her asking her, for example, um, it said that Our Lady appeared to her and asked her, said, you know, she was there offering her sufferings for the salvation of souls. And she came to her and asked her, it said, that, that would you like to come to heaven now? Or are you willing to stay longer and save more souls? She said, I want to stay. You see? Mm -hmm. You know, now. Generosity. You know, she was, heart. yeah, she was suffering. A little girl at that age in a hospital in Lisbon. And you're not talking an hour drive from Fatima like it is today. Yes. It was a day's journey. Right. You know, no parents there. I mean, just to be lonely. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, even today, I wouldn't want to, you know, be dying in a hospital with somebody that loves me. Well, close. that was one of the great sorrows of so many people's hearts during uh, this this pandemic, yeah, absolutely. right? Absolutely. That oh. so many of their loved ones were couldn't in the hospital and, and they yeah. couldn't be there with exactly. them. Exactly. I know, you know? I saw a number of stories like that. Uh, I have a priest friend who who was working in a hospital, and <laughs> sent me a picture of himself. Like he looked like from outer space. He yes. couldn't even touch the people. He I couldn't, know. you know. And that's part of it: holding their hands, anointing them directly, you know, praying with them. He looked like a spaceman. He said it was a horrible thing, but at least he was able to be in there with them, you know. Well, yes, praise be to God for that, yeah. for that comfort and assurance. Yeah. But he said moment. the families couldn't be there, and that was very frustrating for the families. Oh, it was frustrating for the families and 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 for the person who was in the right. throes of death right then. Yeah, yeah. You know, just imagine. You watch your loved thing. ones there. Truly. Well, friends, we're going to go to a break. And when we come back more with our guest today, I'm sending you off to EWTN's religious catalog, Night of Love, an hour by hour companion for the Fatima Night Vigil. I'm sending you off also to EWTNRC.com to get a copy of the biography of Sister Lucia, A Pathways Under the Gaze of Mary. And I'm sending you out to the Blue Army, right? You'll have to give us the um, address for that for your passport. We yeah. want you to get the passport. That's at Blue Army. Free of charge. Oh, and you're just charge, happy yeah. to send them out, right? Yeah. So it's bluearmy.com. Notice that David and I are both in blue, blue today. today yeah. We didn't even <laughs> consult on this. No, did we? we didn't. No, no. Our lady worked it out. <laughs> there you have it. We're going to be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> EWTN News Nightly in Washington, D.C. I'm Tracy Sable with an EWTN News Link. Pope Francis confirms his visit to three Canadian cities this summer. The Holy Father will spend six days in the country meeting with indigenous people and government leaders. We'll have analysis of his trip tonight. Senator Rand Paul delays a vote on an additional $40 billion in Ukraine aid. In a tweet, the Republican from Kentucky explained, quote, all I requested is an amendment to be included in the final bill that allows for the inspector general to oversee how funds are spent. Australia's defense minister says a Chinese warship with spying capabilities is nearing the country's western coast. It is unprecedented for a Chinese warship to be so close to Australia. Australia calls it, quote, an aggressive act. I'm Tracy Sable with EWTN News Nightly. Be sure to join us this evening. No matter where you are in the world or what culture you are born into, our Catholic faith connects us and sharing a meal brings us together as a universal family through Christ. Fruit of the earth, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands, it will become what spiritually feeds us. And this is gonna be great as we make our trip and get in touch with the people, the food, and help others to savor their faith. Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on EWTN. Welcome back, everybody. We're visiting with our guest today, David Carollo, and we're talking about Our Lady of Fatima and, you know, the phenomena that surrounded it. And we're also taking some of the emails that came in uh, with questions about Fatima. I want to hold up two books for you. Keep holding them up because I really want you to get them. This is the biography of Sister Lucia written by the sisters who lived with her in the Carmel community. A Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary is the title of the book. It's going to be a fascinating read. I know it 
quote, haven't read it yet, but I'm going to. Uh, and that's available for you at EWTNRC.com, as well as this one, which I think is quite helpful, Night of Love, an hour-by-hour -hour companion for the Fatima Night Vigil. So if you're going to make a vigil throughout the course of the night, this is the book for you to get and to follow. But you can also move into this book for a holy hour uh, and take out bits and pieces of it that would be most appropriate Absolutely. for you. In addition to that, we're sending you out to bluearmy.com. Com. BlueArmy.com. We want you to get uh, this free of charge passport to help you make uh, the first fr uh, Saturdays Saturday. of every month, at, uh, which was requested by our, our Blessed Lady. And it's available for you there free of charge. Just go out to uh, BlueArmy.com, sign up for it. It'll come to you in the mail. This will keep you on track. Now they can download so, it even and print it. Oh, it's well, you easier. can download it and print it. Makes that it is even easier. easier. <laughs> you know, isn't that something? Yes. I know. Technology in our world does come today, to our right? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, listen, we have Rose from Pennsylvania. Okay. She's got a question for us. Sister Lucia kept that third secret for so many years and mm -hmm. finally revealed it to Pope St. John Paul II. Mm -hmm. Was he the Pope in the secret, or is there another shooting to come? Well, that's interesting. Actually, she didn't give it to him. She, we, she entrusted it to the Holy Father through the bishop. Uh, it was entrusted to the Holy Father well before that. Yes. with the instructions that it couldn't be open until 1960. And we all waited for that. We I, did. I was a little girl at yep. that time, many, many and yeah. I just couldn't wait. Right, everybody wanted. And, Our founder had a big thing <laughs> up for that, too. And that was, that was uh, John the 23rd, wasn't it? Pope John Saint. the 23rd opened it in 1960. It said he opened it, read it, wept, and closed it. Yes. That's what they said. So it wasn't, it wasn't, um, uh, it wasn't brought out until much later, but it's actually, it's, it's one secret in three parts. The first okay. part of the secret was the vision of hell. The second part was the revelation of World War II. The third revelation, of course, was this part that was being held. And um, John Paul II, St. Pope John Paul II, spoke of this in, a, in I think about 1980 in an interview he did when he talked about why the secret had not been revealed. And his point was that, that if there is a prophecy that says that great parts of the earth are going to be flooded, millions of people are going to die, there's no use. The people just, you know, if you're going to live on prophecy, he said, whatever is said in this, and he wasn't, he wasn't revealing anything, whatever is said in this, he said, you know, is prophecy of where we're going and what can happen. And then he pulled out his rosary and he said, he said, this is the remedy. That's right. He pulled, this is the remedy. He pulled out his rosary and said, this is the remedy. Put everything in the hands of the mother of God. That's right. Okay. Now, was he the, was he the Pope in there? It's possible. Um, some say yes, some say no, he didn't die, but it doesn't really show him dying. They show the Holy Father climbing a hill amid a city that's been that's been in ruins with bodies strewn everywhere and a cross at the top. And then he's, he's a slain or attacked and goes down. Well, it, that also could be the church. Look at mm -hmm. what the church is going through today, okay? Maybe it's the persecution of the church. I don't know. I mean, right. I, I'm just saying we don't really know exactly what it's meant. Is he the Pope? Because he was shot and he did survive. That could be. On yeah. Our Lady's Feast Day. On Our Lady's Feast Day in 1981. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's very hard to say if, right. if that's what, what it was. But the reality is, um, you know, I think it, it, I personally think when it was revealed in the year 2000, many naysayers say, oh, the Vatican actually hit it. That's not what it really said. You know, I have a problem with that. I mean, yes. the reality is you see what it is. Look at the world today. And again, it's like anything we've been, like we've been talking about. The world we're in today is a world in trouble. Um, and so troubles in the church, troubles in society, you know, th th this, is, this is what it's talking about. This is what it's showing, you know, mm -hmm. this, this, this vision, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I, I think that, um, so I don't know what to say, I, I, it, but it was revealed much before the time of John Paul II. Yeah, and or you know, I assume it, it was given before. Before that, yeah, that yeah, right. right. And, and, and I do want to say too, you know, there's great wisdom and, and what the Holy Father did. Exactly. Uh, because, you know, if, if you hear all of these dire situations, rather than leading you right. uh, to do uh, the, the, the fulfill the request that our Blessed Lady yes, asked, right. it causes people to despair. Right. You know, and, and also to read into history everything that's happening in the current moment, to read into that, yeah. uh, you know, instead of reading out of that. Right. So, so, you know, you read, you read the message into it. It's, it's like an eisegesis instead of an exegesis. And 
scripture, uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's that kind of a situation. Uh, but, you know, I, I do want to talk a little bit about Our Lady's prophetic words there because I think that they need to be heeded. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem is that those requests have never been fulfilled, even no. the prayer of the rosary. You know, one of the worst things I think that happened, David, I mean, you know, I don't know what you're going to say about this, but I'm going to put it out there. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, when, when, when Vatican II documents were misapplied and mm -hmm. they were misapplied, were, those sure. documents are beautiful. When they were misapplied and Our Lady was removed from our oh. churches, it was like, you know, her heel was off of the serpent and mm -hmm. the serpents came into the church, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, and, and, and you think about that and you think about the fact that, you know, here we are, we haven't prayed that rosary even, in, even to this day. Restoration of devotion to our Blessed Lady right. is the remedy for this moment oh, because no that's question. the way heaven wants to do it. That's Jesus right. always comes by way of his mother and the Holy Spirit. That's Louis de Montfort straight up. He says it straight right? out and that's exactly it. We have to have the advocate to God the Father through God the Son and to God the Son through, she, he's arranged it this way. That's exactly she right. She is the mediatrix of grace. She is the one we come to. And, and you know, if you look to her for the guidance of how to be more in line with God, who knows better? That's right. Okay, and that's what St. Louis de Montfort talks about. So when you do the, the, the holy slavery, the, you know, the, the being, you know, giving yourself through with and in for, right? That's how he puts it. Well, I call it the twift principle, the twift principle of life. Exactly, <laughs> I, yeah, I've heard that, I heard that said, yeah. And, and that's exactly what it is. I mean, you know, that you do everything, you give everything to Our Lady. That's right. Even the merits, you go, you, you gain a plenary indulgence, so you hand it to her. That's right, you, know, you do it, Mom. You do it. Now, yeah. I say, you know, if I'm going to die today, would you give me that one back? Maybe, you know, <laughs> I'll be honest. No, we're little, no, we're, you can't do that. <laughs> right? We're all a little selfish, but, but no, on the same token, you have to understand you are saving people and, and, and you are saving souls. I mean, yeah. there's, there's a premise in this book, Night of Love, uh, and I pose, he poses the question, can you save a thousand souls by one night in adoration? You know, well, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. But you know what? If we get to heaven, what if what if these souls that you may have gotten there, they're going to be there for you that's when you right. need them at the most. Oh, at the yeah. End, you oh, know? So I, I, I now believe, you're quoting you know. our great friend, Susan Tassoni. Oh, see, OK, good old <laughs> Susan. Yeah, good Susan. Lady. Yeah, our common friend. Did yeah. you know I coined that phrase? I, I, oh, I take okay, full very credit good. and I'm proud of it, so I'm announcing it. <laughs> <laughs> I coined that name. That's hey, good. listen, we've got one more question in just a couple of minutes. Sure. We're, we're running close. Yeah. Lynn in New England wants to know, I'm interested in knowing more about the miracle of the sun. Could you please explain what happened that day and the significance and meaning of it? Also, any idea why we don't hear more about this dramatic event in our day and time? That's a very good question as to why we don't hear more about it. Um, I think the reality was what happened. Our Lady promised a miracle so that all would believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the interesting thing about it, it was said that, you know, you realize in, in the August, they, they, they missed the August visit of Our Lady. Mm -hmm. They were, well, the, the August Well, they were detained Because they were detained in, in, the, in the prison. <laughs> And um, then later she appeared to them on August 19th, but she said to them that the miracle will be diminished because of what happened, mm -hmm. because of what happened. So we all suffer for the actions of others. You That's see what right. I mean? Now, what it's was that it? that corporate weight of sin again. Ex exactly what you're talking about. So it was a horrible day, rain. I mean, just mud up to here. We have, we have a, a video which is available by Mr. Dominic Rish. He was a witness in our, in 1957, John Hafford, our founder, co-founder interviewed him. And we do have that on our website at BlueArmy.com uh, that it's available. You can watch there. it? Pardon me? You can watch you it You can there? watch it or maybe purchase it. I'm not quite oh, sure okay. how we okay. have it set up on there, but, but it's beautiful. He was a young boy at the time and he mm -hmm. was a witness. Wow. And he talks about, and, in, and then when, when, when the sun began to spin and everybody started confessing themselves and people were, were, were uh, you know, I mean, for some people it was, it was almost like a beautiful experience, okay, yes. you know, but when it's all over, they were all dry. Their clothes were clean, like they just came from the cleaners. It was just the most. Beautiful it was undeniable. Thing. Undeniable. It was yeah. undeniable that it was an act from heaven. Yeah, absolutely. And this has been an undeniably very good program. Well, thank you. <laughs> so thank you for accepting our <laughs> invitation and coming. Yeah. We are right down to 30 seconds, and I want to yeah. send everybody out. Night of love, an hour by hour companion for the Fatima Night Vigil, written by the founder of the Blue Army, John Haffert. We encourage you to get out there and to get a copy of this, and also the biography of Sister Lucia, A Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary, is available for you there. Until we have the opportunity to be together again, may the abundant life of Jesus Christ be yours, and may God richly bless you. Bye-bye now.
Discover outstanding holy reminders anytime. Go to EWTNRC.com to watch the latest episode of EWTN Religious Catalog right on the homepage. Learn about the newest sacramentals, books, and gifts for any season from the EWTN family you know 